Hey guys, it's Jesse with CAD Dimensions. Well, I have no doubt that David Lee Roth of Van Halen was exhibiting nothing more than an enthusiasm for school supplies when he famously declared, I've got my pencil. After all, who doesn't love a fresh pack of writing utensils? Either way, rest assured, dear viewer, I mean no innuendo when I say that in this episode, we're going back to school to drop the iconic number two pencil. <laughs> What? Oh, you guys thought I'd be taking this off for the tutorial? I think I look good in it. I'm keeping it. Here's the model that we're going to be working with. Again, the number two pencil. This model is up on the CAD Dimensions Grab CAD uh, page. I'll put a link to it um, in the description. Um, I'll also attach a PDF uh, with some of the dimensions. Again, the, the dimensions aren't really critical on this. Um, it's just a just an exercise. If you're new to this channel, uh, model everything I originally designed to. Uh, just kind of work through modeling everyday items, miscellaneous things. Most of us here at CAD Dimensions just kind of learned on our own, just modeling whatever we could get our hands on. So um, that was kind of the the plan behind that um, this whole channel. So. Um, you can download the files. It is made in 2018. Uh, I didn't include a step file or inter any kind of intermediate format because, well, you're going to be modeling it along anyway. So any version should be fine um, in the past handful of years anyway. Uh, but anyway, you've got some uh, dimensions if you want to work off of those. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'll close this down and we'll just start off with a new file. And I'll just start with a new template. I don't have a millimeter template uh, on my machine right now. I just reformatted things. So first thing I'll do is I'll go down to my uh, units here and we'll switch this over into millimeters since I have my dimensions in millimeters. And to get this kicked off, uh, again, this, this geometry, uh, I'm going to rate three stars. Um, it's not a very simple or complex shape, but a couple of the techniques that are built into this design um, are a little bit on the trickier side or maybe not covered in essentials class anyway. So um, I'll, I'll mark this intermediate. Uh, some of those being the multi-body part, that's kind of an interesting technique that uh, gets covered in something like the advanced part class. Uh, that's kind of a cool technique. So we'll be building this all in one part, but multiple pieces. Um, we've got some thin revolves and things like that. Uh, segment sketch is kind of an interesting one. Um, so we'll be building this as a, as a multi-body uh, part and in order to do that uh, we're going to start things off with a contour sketch that's actually going to have more information than one sketch profile would normally have so to do that I'm going to go right up to my uh, top plane here we'll start from the top and we'll work our way down so uh, I'll start a sketch on my new top plane and from here we want to create the uh, the hex shape that the pencil is so to do that we'll move right uh, on up to the polygon tool and the polygon tool we want to have set to six you can set the polygon tool to any number of sides you want uh, in this case we do want to have six a six-sided one which is what it's already set to so I'll go ahead and I'll set this down I uh, remember lock your sketches right to the origin so I'll start right from the origin and move my way out you'll see that the polygon tool uses sort of a reference circle to locate that uh, and I'll go ahead and right swipe with my mouse gestures directly up, which is the default to get to the smart dimension tool. Uh, now the distance across the flats here is going to be seven millimeters. Notice that we're way off here, but that's okay. Uh, SolidWorks will scale the sketch as we go put our first dimension in. So I'll set that to seven millimeters. That scales everything down. And again, what I want to do is I want to build in some extra information for this. I want to make the wood shape that would have a hollow in here for where the lead would go. Uh, and we'll reuse that shape to actually create the lead itself. So I'll use my S key uh, shortcut to grab the circle tool. And from the circle tool, I'll place that right on the origin as well. So we'll place that down. That's going to be two millimeters. Go ahead and set that to two millimeters. Now at this point we think, hmm, this should be a fully defined sketch, but my polygon is showing uh, still blue, indicating that it is not fully defined and our sketch is telling us that it's underdefined. Uh, we wanna make sure that all of our sketches are fully defined, so we want everything to go into black. So in order to do that, uh, if I'm not sure or, uh, what, what is going on here and, and why it's underdefined, um, my best easiest way to, to figure out what's going on is just to grab one of the vertices that is showing up in blue and shake it and see what falls off. So in this case, we see that this is not aligned. So I need to have this set uh, vertical. So all we need to do here is select that top point and control and select the origin and we'll set that to vertical. 
Okay, so we've now got a fully black, uh, fully defined sketch. And again, this has potentially more information than we would need to create one feature, but that's okay. We'll, we'll work with that as we go. So uh, at this point, we're ready to use this sketch. Uh, I'll use the D key on my keyboard, which is part of breadcrumbs. In this case, that brings the confirmation corner right to my cursor, so I can exit sketch. And from there, we'll use our extrude boss base. I'm gonna flip this over, we'll go down, we'll keep the top plane at the top here, and we wanna go down by 180 millimeters. So we'll type in 180 millimeters here. Now you'll notice that uh, my uh, my boss extrude is already kind of predicting what I might want. And anytime we put a closed contour inside of another closed contour, SolidWorks takes a guess and says, okay, we're probably trying to remove that contour from the other one, which in this case uh, is actually what we're looking for. So we're trying to leave a hollow for where the lead would go. Uh, we'll tackle this as far as using that profile to put in the lead in just a second. So we'll leave this to 180 millimeters blind and we'll see that goes all the way down to the, the tip. So we'll say okay to that. And now the second portion that we want to do would be to actually add in the lead piece itself. But we've already got the shape that we need this to be. We don't need necessarily need to convert entities or create another sketch that would do this. We already have a sketch that has that information in it. So what we're gonna do is use the uh, contour that's built into the first sketch and we're gonna use that as a shared sketch. So all I need to do to reference that sketch again is just expand this out into my tree and access sketch one. So I wanna use sketch one for a second time. So I'll select the sketch here here and we'll go right back up to extrude once again so my extrude will now be linked to that original sketch that I already created and we'll have a situation where two features will be sharing one sketch now at this point I need to tell it what bits of information I want to pull out of this sketch so what I want to do is go down to selected contours and from that selected contours region I want to pick what contours I actually want to use out of that sketch so we'll clear this out I don't need the information that's in here and the contour that I want to use is this center one that's in the middle so I'll select in that region there and you can see that picks up just the area that in this case would be the lead of the pencil. So we need this to go the opposite direction. I want this to match. Now here's a critical step. So we have the length correct. They're both to the right uh, depth here. But if I send this straight down, we have a tool that's turned on by default called Merge Result. And Merge Result will roll all of this together into one piece. And that's not what we want. We want to keep everything separated. So what we want to do is move right over into our Boss Extrude here and uncheck Merge Result. And by unchecking Merge Result, what that does is that will keep these two features separate. So we'll end up with, again, what's called a multi-body part. So as soon as I do that, we'll say, OK. And we see that even though these two features are touching where you would normally expect them to roll together, we see that there is a seam there. And if we look in our tree, we see that our solid bodies folder now includes two separate bodies. So we essentially have two parts within a part, if you want to think of it that way. All right, now the other thing that we'll notice is because we use the same sketch for two different features, we now have another little indicator down here. There's a little hand that's kind of reaching out, indicating that that sketch is being shared across multiple uh, multiple features. So we see that we now have a, a hand on both of these, and you'll notice this one gets a slightly different icon indicating that we've chosen a specific contour out of that. So we've got the standard sketch icon and the contour sketch icon. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and we'll get some, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and we'll put some uh, appearances on this. So we'll put the wood on here, we'll put some paint on here, and we'll get some uh, appearances showing up on the lead portion itself. So in order to do this, uh, this actually works well by showing the entire um, list of the, the filters that we have available to us because we now have bodies to apply uh, our appearances to. So let's go right over to the task pane on the right-hand side and we'll choose uh, a, an appearance here. Actually, this matte rubber will work well for something like a graphite. It's kind of dark and it's fairly matte shape. So actually, I'm going to drag this on since it's right here. I'll pull this onto one of the unique faces of that body, which is this end face here. And when I drop it, we see that a little filter pops up that asks me where I want to apply uh, that particular appearance. So do I want to apply to the face that I just dragged it on, the feature that made that face, the body itself, which is what we're going to use, or the entire part. So in this case, what I want to do is apply that to the entire body. So I'll select the body option, and we'll see that that entire body, if I roll down to the other side, that whole body in there has now been uh, changed over to that charcoal kind of appearance. 
Uh, now we want this whole thing to be wood, but the outsides of these are painted. So let's go ahead and we'll apply a wood appearance to this body, and then we'll apply some uh, a painted appearance onto the outside. So let's go back into our appearances here. We'll go down into uh, wood, so under organic and wood. Uh, we'll use uh, something light. We'll go with, um, let's see, we'll do an unfinished ash end grain, and we'll apply that to the body again. So I want to apply that to the, the outer body. Now that is pretty good, except that the outside of this pencil is painted. So let's go ahead and we'll do that. We'll come back into our appearances. We'll slide up to the top. Uh, a lot of times for paint, I just like to use the, the plastics uh, because I can adjust the gloss pretty easily just by choosing what type of plastic, and it's a pretty similar type of appearance. So we'll go into the high gloss plastic and we'll just apply a yellow high gloss plastic to this outside. Now, in this case, I don't want to apply this to the entire body because that's going to overwrite the wood that I just did. So we want to do just the face here. So I want to select just the face and that will keep the rest of the body wood and it will apply just an, an outer sort of like a paint right to the outside piece. Now I also want this to work around the rest of the outer faces so usually what I do is to just copy and paste the appearance. Now you can go in and edit the appearance and add more selections to it but you don't necessarily have to. So I'll select the face that's associated with the appearance that I want and on the keyboard uh, I'll use control shift and C so just like copy but adding shift in there and the other items that I want to add in I'll just uh, control and select those these guys here those ones and same thing control shift V and what that does is that will paste that appearance that I just copied off of that face onto the rest of the selections that I've made that just keeps me from having to go in and edit the appearance and add in some selections Okay, so this is looking pretty good so far. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll trim off the end of this pencil. And from here, uh, we'll, uh, we'll add a little uh, round towards the end. Now, I want to make sure that when I'm cutting this, I'm cutting the entire width. If we're looking in different directions here, we could be looking either from width to width or point to point. So I want to make sure that I'm uh, looking from point to point. So if we look at our planes here, I think our right plane Yes, our right plane goes through from point to point. So I just want to make sure I'm looking at the widest piece just to make sure I'm cutting through everything. So from the right plane, we'll start a new sketch here. And again, we want to trim this down. I might even switch myself over uh, so I can see my hidden lines here a little bit just to see where the core of that pencil is. And we want to trim off a little bit of this so we'll sharpen the pencil, pencil essentially. Uh, I'll use my S key to grab the line tool. And from the line tool, we'll go ahead and we'll just set down a profile that we can cut revolve in order to remove some material. All right, I'll use my S key again and we'll set down a center line. I'll lock the center line to the middle here. We'll just run right up the middle and escape to drop my tool. And from here, we'll put some dimensions on here. So again, I'll swipe up using my right mouse button and grabbing the uh, mouse controls there, <clears throat> our mouse gestures. Uh, from here, we'll set this down maybe half a millimeter, just leave a little bit of room that we can fill it this off at the end. And from here to uh, here, we want this to this. We want that to be 75 degrees. Set that to 75 degrees. I don't know what the angle of an actual pencil sharpener is, but we'll say that's close enough. So here we have our closed contour that we can now cut revolve and remove some material off the end. So we can go ahead and do that. We'll go back to features. We'll go revolve cut. Before we do that, I'm just going to switch my uh, shaded view back over to shaded with edges so we can kind of see what's going on here. Now, when we go to this revolve cut, one thing we want to keep in mind is that we're actually cutting two bodies out of this. So when we're cutting two bodies, we want to keep an eye on what's called the feature scope. So down here at the at the bottom of the feature, we can see that we can cut all bodies or we can cut only selected bodies. So if I wanted to cut just the wood and leave the uh, lead section the way that it is, we could do that by adjusting this uh, feature scope here. So if I uncheck auto select, I can manually select which features or which bodies I want this feature to apply to. Uh, now in this case, I want to shave everything. So I'll leave this set right to all bodies and that will just cut everything. We see that our cut revolve has picked up our axis of revolution, which is this center section here, and that's exactly what we want. So we'll go ahead and we'll say OK. All right, so we can see that our cut revolve set to all bodies now cuts the wood body as well as the, uh, the center body here, which is our lead. So we'll go ahead and we'll zip in and select this outer edge. We'll add a fillet to that using the in context menu. Uh, what did we set this to? Something like 0.25 should do the trick. And we'll say, okay. 
we'll round that off. Okay, this is looking pretty good so far. Now let's go ahead and we'll tackle this top section. So we need the eraser itself and the little uh, aluminum piece that holds on to the eraser. So let's start with the eraser. We'll go up to this top face. We'll select the top face and we'll create a sketch right on that top planar face. And from here again, I'll use my S key. We'll select the circle tool and we'll just go right out to the outer extents of the pencil. So I'll just lock that right on uh, that edge. And again, that will create a fully defined sketch. So right from the origin, right out to this outer edge. From here, we can go ahead and we'll send this straight up. So we'll go back to our features. We'll extrude. We'll send this up by 13 millimeters. And again, we want to make sure that we're unmerging our results. So if we leave this checked, it's going to roll everything together. That's not what we want. We want this as a multi-body part. So again, we'll uncheck merge result. We'll keep this as its own feature, its own body. We'll say, okay. Okay. So that comes in as its own separate entity. Again, we can fill it off this top. I'll select that top edge, select fill it. We'll go with a one millimeter fillet and I'll right click to accept. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll put in our appearance for the eraser. I'll go back to my appearances. We'll do a rubber for this as well because that's kind of the sheen that we're looking for. So we'll say matte rubber. This is obviously not the color that we want, but we'll make a change to this. So I'll drag this on. We'll apply this to the body. So this is black, not really what we're after. Now remember, we do have the same appearance also applied to the lead section. So if I come back to uh, my display manager here and we can see um, exactly what's been applied, you'll notice that there are now two bodies listed under matte rubber. Now I want to make a change to one of these and we can do this from here, but my preferred method is to do this right from the graphics area. So you can select on any face that's associated with this body, hit the little drop down in the in context menu and you'll see that you can make a change to uh, that appearance at any level. So in this case, I want to make a change to the body appearance. So I'll select that body and here we can make a change to its color. So in this case, I want to change this color to something pink uh, and I'll just punch in some values that are kind of close to that 175 and 185. Again, this is good enough for who it's for. You can just pick uh, with the color picker if you want as well. So that should do the trick. We'll say, okay. So now we see that that body has been excluded from the black matte rubber and a new matte rubber option has been created in there. I actually like to switch my appearances uh, sort order over to hierarchy rather than history because that kind of gives me a better idea as to where I've applied my appearances. So in this case, I can see that I've got some face app appearances applied, but mostly body appearances. All right, so far so good. Now we just need the little aluminum piece that wraps around here. Now this is kind of a tricky bit of geometry because it spans across multiple uh, bodies here. It's got some tiny little bumps in its feature. It's revolved, but it's also symmetrical. So I'm gonna go back to the right plane and we're gonna revolve this shape, but it's very thin shape. So trying to create sketches of very thin geometry can often be kind of complex. Uh, and that's where thin features really have a benefit. So let's take a look at how this works here. The first thing I'm going to do is add down a center line since we know we're going to be revolving this. So I'll add a center line right up the middle, <clears throat> again, right from the origin here. And I'm actually going to add another center line right off to the side. Now this center line may or may not be the way that you would approach this. There's a number of different ways that you could do this. Um, and I'll show you the way that I I do it, and again, it might be one of those things where I do it this way today and a, a different way another day. But I'm going to set this down to the length of half of what this is going to be. Uh, so we'll create the revolve, and then we'll actually mirror it. Now I need to figure out how to space out these little bumps, and I want these little bumps to be kind of uh, spaced equally across this uh, shape. Now normally you'd go in and you'd add in some shapes and then you start dimensioning things and try to get things all lined up and maybe make some guesses to what the, the spacing needs to be. Uh, but there is a tool in SolidWorks in the past uh, handful of years, maybe 2014, I want to say it was added, um, and that would be the segment tool. And the segment tool is designed to do exactly that. Now, the segment tool doesn't show up by default, I don't think, in newer versions uh, on the toolbar, so it might be one that you'll have to search for. Uh, if you're always looking for tools in SolidWorks, I always recommend using the search commands tool. Um, if you've seen me present anywhere, I've probably mentioned this at some point. Uh, search commands you can access right from the dropdown, or if you're using the S key, that will launch 
launch you right into it as well. Uh, but search commands will allow you to search the interface and find tools that might not be uh, by default on the toolbar or just one of the more obscure tools. So in this case, we're looking for segment. Uh, and if I start searching for segment, again, it will pull up. And don't forget that if you hit the little uh, eyeball here, it will show you where it is in the interface. I'm just going to launch the tool from here so we can keep going. So I'll click on segments. And what I want to do is I want to segment this, uh, this center line that I put down into a number of uh, pieces. Now, you can actually split this uh, entity up into uh, multiple entities or you can just place down sketch points as reference I'm just gonna place down sketch points as reference because I'm just trying to find where those locations are I just want them all to be equally spaced so this is kinda like using a pattern but before you even pattern anything so three is the number that I need so we'll say okay to this now the reason why I'm doing this in a center line is because I'm gonna need to trim these pieces up a little bit and if we go in and trim the actual geometry then we'll lose our uh, relations and I'll have to replace them so I'm just gonna use this as a reference underneath uh, first and again there's a number of ways that you could go about doing this so S key I'll grab my circle tool we will place down the circles and we need these to be uh, half of this circle but the first thing that I'm gonna do is just set them down place them I'll select them all using control and we'll say equal make them all equal and then I'll place a dimension on one of them to set all of their size so these are gonna be a quarter of a millimeter tiny little guys and I need to now connect these together now I can of course scribe a line all the way down through the middle like I did with this and then start trimming away but again that's going to potentially leave me with spots that I need to adjust or uh, work with my relations here so I'm just gonna grab the line tool and remember that the line tool has multiple modes so we have click and click where that will create uh, just a polygon until you close the polygon and then that will leave you in the line tool or the line tool also has a click and drag where you can create line, 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 and it will keep you in the line tool as well. And that's the one that I'm going to want to use here. So I will select my line tool and I'll click and drag from here to here and click and drag from here to here and click and drag from here to here and the same on the top there to there. Now, when I go to trim these out, we know that everything is set where they need to be. So again, I'll use my S key. I'll select the trim entities tool. I always recommend using the power trim because that's the quickest. And we'll just select across these little sections and that will trim that out. So we now have an open contour that comes down, loops around, comes down, loops around, comes down, loops around, and comes down. Okay. Okay, so we have the outer shape. Now, if we weren't aware of thin geometry in SOLIDWORKS, we would have to go back in and try to make this tiny little line here and then try to match this profile all the way out and around. But that's not necessary in SOLIDWORKS at all. So all we have to do is use this profile and tell SOLIDWORKS to add some thickness to it. So let's go back to our features and from features we can select revolve because that's the type of feature we're trying to create here. And it comes up with a message that says, hey, you've got a sketch that's currently open. What do you want to do with it? So it will allow us to automatically close this uh, geometry for us. So this would work in situations where you have drawn a close, what was going to be a closed profile, but you wanted to use a center line instead. Uh, you can have it automatically close that center line. In this case, that's not what we were after. We actually were trying to do this thin revolution that it's referring to. So I'm actually going to say no, don't automatically close it. I want to use the thin revolve. So we'll say no there. <clears throat> and that launches us into a new section of the revolve tool, which is this thin feature. So from here, we can set a thickness set the thickness for the material and we can choose an axis of revolution. So I'll select this guy here. And now we can see that if I zoom in here a little bit, it's added that thickness, whatever thickness I've chosen to uh, the sketch that I've created. So I don't have to worry about any of those other little entities and getting everything lined up. I just have to tell it where I want the material to go inside or outside, or you can choose other options for that. All right, so this is what I want. This is at least half of what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll say yes to this. But again, before we do that, we want to make sure we're unchecking merge result because I also want this to be its own separate piece. So I'll uncheck merge result here and we'll say OK to that. OK, so that's looking pretty good. So that's half of what we're after anyway. So now we can go ahead and we'll mirror this. And when we mirror this, we want to make sure we're mirroring the body itself. So take everything that's involved and flip it over. So I'll choose the mirror tool from the top. And the mirror face or plane is going to be the bottom face of this. So I'll use my G key to use the magnifying glass and zip in since that's kind of a small selection there. I'll select that bottom uh, face. 
And the piece that I want to mirror is under bodies to mirror. So again, we don't want to be under features to mirror. We want to be in bodies to mirror. And I want to take this entire body and flip that down. All right. Now I also want to merge solids. And the only thing this, this has an opportunity to merge is the two of these. So we're good to go with that. We can merge solids and say, okay. All right. So we see no seam here. It's taken that body, flipped it over, merged the two of them together and kept that as one individual body. So now we have several bodies to work with. We've got the wood piece right? we have the uh, core, the lead, move this up a little bit. We've got the eraser and we now have this mirrored section at the top, which is the little aluminum piece. So let's go ahead and we'll add the appearance to this. We'll select our appearances. We'll move up to metal. We'll choose aluminum and we'll just go with something like a polished aluminum. Again, we'll apply this right to the body. Okay, so this is looking pretty good so far. The only thing we need to do left is put some markups on the uh, pencil itself. So where the number two would go or HB or whatever you want to put on here. Now, this doesn't really need to be a feature. It's not something that really gets pressed in. I, I guess some pencils, you can kind of look, you can see there's a little dimple there. But let's say for the sake of example that this is just painted on, it's just flat. Uh, we would need to either do this with a decal, since there's no actual geometry there, uh, or we can do this with what's called a split line, and that's my preferred method. So let's create a split line that will essentially scribe the shape that we want into one of these faces. So let's do this on this face here. I'll select that top face and we'll hit sketch and we'll zip in here a little bit. And we want this uh, shape to be kind of a, an oval shape or a slot shape and then have the number two inside of that. So we'll go up to the slot and we'll set down a two point slot here, here to here. And we'll set some dimensions on this. So again, these are kind of arbitrary, but I'll right swipe up. Now, the dimensions that I have set were six millimeters from tip to tip. Uh, remember when you're dimensioning from arcs, we have the arc condition that we need to modify. The shortcut for that is the shift key on the keyboard. So I want to hold shift and dimension from arc to arc. And that will do, in this case, max to max. Okay, we'll set that down. And that will be six millimeters. Our width, we'll go with three and a half. Looks about right. Uh, distance, we'll put just some arbitrary distance in here. This doesn't matter. Wherever we want this to be placed. 20 sounds good. Okay, so now we want some, uh, some text in here. All right, so what we want to do with text is we want to give it some kind of marker to be based off of. So I'm going to select my S key and we'll put in a center line. And I'm just going to slide this center line somewhere down here in the uh, bottom section. That's where the number two will sit and then it will come up off of that. To reference to that, we'll select the text tool. And from here, we'll just set what we want our text to be. So we want our text to be the number two. We want it to be linked to our little uh, reference that we just made for it. And we can choose what kind of font we want to use. So I want to uncheck use document font and I want to use my own custom font. So from here, I'll select font. And here we can use a different font. I want something kind of bold. So we'll go with something like uh, impact. Yeah, impact will work. And we can switch this over to points and we'll use, sometimes there's a little guess and check here, 14. That looks good. Okay, so we'll say okay to that. And if we need to make any changes for where the text is, we can then just move its reference around and change where the placement occurs. Okay, so we can, no, it's too far. Suppose I could dimension this out, but a little guess and check is fine. All right, so that's that's good enough. So what we want to do is now take this shape and imprint this shape onto that face behind it, and that is where the uh, the the feature itself actually comes in. All right, so we've got the sketch nailed down. We'll go back to features, and from features underneath curves, we want to use the tool split line. A split line has a few different options, but in this case, we're looking for the projection mode. And from projection, we want to project our current sketch onto a particular face. And in this case, the particular face that we're looking for is this guy right here. So I'll select that face. I'll right click to accept. And now we see that we now have selectable faces uh, where those edges were. So now we saw earlier we can apply an appearance 
to a, an individual an individual face we now had have an individual face that's the shape that we would have wanted to paint this so we can go right back into our appearances we can go back up to the top under plastic high gloss plastic we can choose a black high gloss plastic and we'll drag this over and apply that just to the face All right, so there we have it. I think that is about finished up. Well, thanks for sticking in there with me, and I hope you picked something up along the way. Until next time, keep rocking.